Need approval of the agenda? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, oh. Okay. Administration. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, I think we'd like to first start um, and hear from our emer emergency management director and our public health director just as a little bit of a status update on this COVID-19 COVID pandemic, and, uh, and then we'll turn our attention to the resolution. Good morning, Erin uh, Tufty, Emergency Management Director. Um, Renee and I have been working um, with staff in the Emergency Operations Center for a little over a week now um, in the management of Stearns County's response to the COVID pandemic. Um, we continue to work with staff um, across the county in different departments to make sure that we are communicating messages effectively and that we have the resources that we need in order to make good decisions. Um, both for the community and for our staff. Um, it's a coordinated effort. Um, at the same time, we realize that as we're encouraging the public and encouraging the community um, to take actions for social distancing um, and looking at other options to continue their services, um, we are doing the same and moving to some remote operations, some teleconferencing, um, and using email um, as often as we can to get messages out. So um, I think with that, um, Renee has a status update of where we're at, and then we would be available for any questions. Yeah. So good morning, Renee Frondinson, the Public Health Division Director. So um, Minnesota right now is at 77 cases. We will know um, what that looks like after 11 o'clock today, because um, that's when the Minnesota Department of Health updates their numbers. Um, the numbers are actually going to uh, look like um, they're slowing down. Um, but that is going to be giving us, I think, a little bit of a false sense that, that things are working where we think things are working. Um, but what we've run into is um, some testing um, glitches, basically, in, in the supply chain. And so um, yesterday or the day before, the Minnesota Department of Health sent out guidelines um, to our health care providers um, that narrows very, very um, drastically who is going to get tested. You know, prior to that time, Centric Care had even set up curb testing um, where people could call in, they would assess them for their risk, and then they would have them come by and they were testing uh, in a drive through like situation. Now it's um, three targeted groups of individuals um, that they're going to be targeting. Either they're hospitalized um, at, with COVID um, signs or symptoms, um, they're um, healthcare workers that may have been exposed or they're individuals that are in um, a, like a long-term care setting. Um, so the general public at this point is not going to get tested. Um, so not only is the Minnesota Department of Health struggling, um, but even those um, private labs are struggling. They may not have any reagents. Um, so, so testing right now is, um, is going to drop off. And as a result of that, um, we're going to see a drop in the number of cases. So, so even though um, it, it uh, will appear as if our numbers are slowing down, that may not necessarily be the case. And the Minnesota Department of Health is working furiously to try to increase that testing capacity again, because what we want to do is be able to monitor how many people um, are potentially in, or are infected um, to monitor how well our strategies are actually working. So um, we think that those strategies, um, if you look at the data from the past, um, and we have some data coming out of Italy right now um, in two provinces that actually, um, um, d one delayed um, instituting the social distancing and the other one did it immediately. And the, the um, graph we showed you several, like maybe a week and a half ago, it's kind of blurring, you know, um, uh, is, uh, is also what we're seeing unfolding in Italy right now. So that area that actually instituted social distancing has now flattened their curve. So, um, so we know it works. Um, so we don't want people to go, oh, there's less cases, I'm okay, I don't need to do this. No, we need you to continue to do the social distancing. So um, nationally, we're close to 10,000 cases. We anticipate today that we will go over 10,000 cases. Um, in the US, we have right now um, 150 deaths. Um, Nash, um, in the world, there's over um, 9,000 deaths. Um, 
these numbers are changing very quickly. Um, as Aaron said, um, we've almost doubled in the United States in three days. So um, the numbers continue to grow. Just to give you a little bit of a sense of what we've been doing in the Emergency Operations Center, so we've done a really concerted effort with reaching out to our other government partners. Um, they've been very receptive and very thankful um, for the information and been wonderful partners with us and saying, hey, we need to get this information out to your community. So they've done a really nice job. Um, we've done a lot of work around EMS and providing them with guidance to help them better understand when they should be using the masks, which masks should they be using. Um, today we have a, a conference call with our long-term care facilities to see how they are doing and what kind of needs do they have. Um, we did a call yesterday with all of our clinics to make sure everything was um, going well and what kind of needs did they have. Um, we've worked with environmental services in the city around the bars and restaurants closing and making sure that that um, actually happened. Um, we have um, put together a plan on what to do if we have an individual who is homeless and needs to be isolated and quarantined and um, we are ready with that information as well. Um, and we have a hotline in place and we uh, are encouraging people to call that. We've gotten somewhere between 30 and 40 calls in a day um, with a variety of different questions. So as that information gets out, we anticipate that we'll have more and more calls, so. Go ahead. A couple of questions, I guess maybe it's more clarifying. Um, one's question, one's clarifying. So when you're saying the number of cases, those are known cases because we don't yes. have sufficient yes. ability to test everybody right now. So yes. just when people are hearing those numbers, I, part of what I think you're saying is, just know those are the only ones that have been identified through a test. Right, and uh, the data, it, it's, um, they, they give you a range. So um, we, as we've been trying to monitor all the information that's out there, like I said, this is quickly unfolding. I've seen everything from, you can anticipate that um, for every case there's 2.5 individuals that are also infected, all the way up to five. So, um, so that's the that's range that they're giving okay. us of that's people helpful. that would also then be infected um, from one case. And then so. uh, any better idea when we're gonna be able to get the full supply chain um, so that people can be tested. I had a couple of people contact us, county constituents that have all the symptoms and clearly they don't fit into the criteria you just said. So they're, they're isolating themselves. They're trying to figure out what this, you know, it'd be, mm -hmm. be helpful if they knew so that they knew um, how much to isolate internally in their household as well. Yeah, um, so um, the Minnesota Department of Health uh, on a call yesterday, they weren't sure when this was gonna change. So this is the, um, program that we're running right now, I guess you could say. Uh, this is the way we're running. Um, what they did say is to make sure that the public um, understood if you have the symptoms, um, you need to assume you are infected and act as if you are infected. So we would want them to isolate um, with, uh, with that 14 days and they would want to minimize any exposure to their family members to prevent the spread of it. So we want you to act as if you've been told you are positive. So Thank you for c clarifying that. That's basically what I parody back because you've been sending really great information out. Thank, Thank you. you. Any, any other questions? Dr. Willie, you got some comments you want to add? Um, yes, if there's no more questions for these two. Aaron and Renee have been doing a fantastic job. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, we've been leaning on them really hard in this <laughs> during this time, and we appreciate it. Um, actually, all of our staff has been doing a mar marvelous job of implementing the CDC and the White House and the MDH um, um, methods to to keep social distancing and, and all of that. And, and we need, of course, to keep those methods and techniques in place to protect the public, protect our employees. And the more we protect our employees, the longer this goes, the, you know, we'll be able to continue to pro provide all of our services. Uh, even if it lasts a long time. Uh, yesterday, um, we became especially concerned with our license centers. Um, a number of all the states, many, most of the license centers around the state are closing, and our license center got busier and busier and more congested, so we were unable to um, practice social distancing in that instance. And so yesterday, Commissioner Lensmeyer, as the chair of the board, 
um, did sign a temporary emergency declaration so that we could um, provide those licensed center services without the physical space. Um, so we closed down those, uh, those offices. People can still do almost all of that business on our virtual license center or at the drive up window. And so that is just an example of some of the, some of the methods that we're gonna need to put in place uh, to con continue to keep people <laughs> separate but, uh, but continue to provide our services. Um, so the, the, the resolution you have before you, I think will allow the administration, the county administration and our EOC folks um, to be nimble enough to put some creative methods in, in, in place um, to, 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 to continue to help spread the, the virus, but also continue to provide services. And I'll tell you, we're not experiencing an unusually high amount of expenditures, for example, um, or do I see a need to close down county government? But what, what, um, what we will do if the board adopts this resolution is shut down um, access to three buildings, uh, the administration center, the West Service Center, and the Melrose office. And again, we won't close down the county. Uh, we'll provide all these services over the phone, over the internet, with email, with regular mail, with drop boxes, um, any, any other creative method that we might dream up because we've been pretty creative uh, with all of this so far. And so, and, and of course, where, where we need, where we can't avoid face-to-face, -face, we'll do that um, as safe as possible. And when you're talking about public safety and public health and some of those activities um, are, are going to have to continue to be face-to-face, -face, but we'll just uh, do those as safe as possible. And, and almost every service we provide is gonna be able to be uh, provided over these alternative methods and if there's a few that we aren't can't do you know exact uh, immediately um, hopefully we'll figure out some ways to do that for example in the license center we, we won't be able to renew a driver's license or do the or do the enhanced ID or passports um, but as this calms down I think we'll figure out a way that we, we will even be able to do those um, and we have of course human services uh, providing a number of programs and services and and they, uh, and Melissa can answer questions if you have, have them, um, but they are work, doing lots of work remotely um, and still getting uh, all the work done uh, that needs to be done for all of the people that are in need. So um, if you look at that resolution, uh, I would turn your attention to the last whereas, and you can see that what that paragraph does, it, it invokes the counties emergency operations plan, which really that gives us the flexibility to do a lot of things, to waive some rules, waive some policies, um, purchase some things if we need to, those kinds of things. Again, I, we, haven't, we haven't done a lot of deviation in, in the services we're providing. We're doing them different, but we're providing those services and, and, and we're not seeing really a high amount of expenditures. But again, if you, if you uh, choose to adopt this resolution, the first thing that we will do is to close public access to those three buildings. And again, do everything we can to continue to provide all of those services. Um, the declaration puts the, uh, the, emergent, or the emergency declaration would be in place for 30 days. You can see that in the resolution. And that will take us uh, up to April 21st, which, which I would suggest would be your next board meeting. And then at that time we can um, regroup and uh, give the board a good update and decide where we need to go from there. Of course, I'll keep you, you up to date um, in the meantime as best as I can too. So uh, that's, that's really what I wanted the board to hear. If you need more details about how we'll provide some of the services, um, I have some of the staff here that can answer some of those more specific questions uh, if you have them. Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of things, Mike. First of all, I wanna thank staff for being here today and also just the professionalism I see around the county. It's, I think it's quite good uh, and I feel very confident about the people we have in the room here today and, and the job that they're doing. It's, this is not easy stuff to deal with. Uh, as far as the, uh, communications with the public, people will still be able to call in. Are we gonna have automated or live people I mean, be able to respond to their questions? I, I, that's a great question, Commissioner. We will be fully staffed. Um, all employees might not be in the building, but yes, phones will be answered. Uh, we will be fully staffed. We're not laying anybody off. Um, we expect to, hopefully, we'll be doing 
business as usual other than the face-to-face. -face. Okay, okay, good. And then uh, as far as uh, with expiration of, let's say, license tabs and expirations of license, has the state done any action as far as we know as saying we're going to give you a grace period of a month or two uh, months or not? Commissioner, the only thing, and somebody might have more recent information than I, but I think they I heard that the governor's executive order did extend the real ID. Randy, did you Correct. hear that? Or? Yeah. Um, I think yes. they're not, not going to be enforcing the, you know, the driver's license um, due dates and the tabs. Um, they may need to do something more officially when the legislature meets. And then the, the federal guideline, I think the federal government is looking at extending that also or has already. So, yeah. For driver's license, we're not the original ones that issue them. We only do the renewals. So, um, you know, I think in the next month we'll look at options there, but I don't think that's a, a critical need at this point. I just want, you know, people that have expired tabs or expired license panicking, saying I can't be driving around or uh, trying to get in here and scrambling, but, you know, that, that we're within reason that they'd be able to feel confident, okay, eventually I will get this. You know? Yeah. And license tabs can be renewed by mail. Right, and, and online. Yeah. They can be done in our virtual center. They can do the drive up, or they can, the state system is still working. Uh, their, their online system. And it's also. much better now. Yeah. And I think there's <laughs> private ones too they can go to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, now the important stuff uh, is the farming baseball dinner still on? As far as I know, we have a meeting tonight. Okay. All right. Uh, so there's, uh, Mr. Chair, there's two actions uh, being requested. One is one is to adopt the resolution, and the second one is that standard language that um, that you typically do at the end of the year when we go several weeks without a board meeting. Yeah. Uh, that's the second piece of action is adopt that language so that we can continue to do some of those um, more routine things um, in in the absence of a board meeting. Can we do it in one motion, Paul? Uh, I think so. All right. We need a motion. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We got second, second. Uh, <laughs> all those in favor say aye, aye. Aye, aye. aye. <laughs> all right. You didn't wait on this one, Joe. Come on. <laughs> Normally you're trying to fool us. No. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Could And I'm sorry. Could, I do have, could, could we just have um, Melissa just, um, let us know, maybe more for the public, if somebody has more of a family crisis, they may normally think, okay, I can just go show up. They can't just go show up. I know you're doing lots of work, but would you mind just taking like one or two minutes to let people know what they would do if they're, they've got a situation in their, their household? Sure, um, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, um, across the entire department and in every division we've already implemented, um, um, with the way in which we usually hear about families um, that are in crisis is often law enforcement or from one of our workers already. And um, in cases where we actually do need to see people's um, high risk correction cases and probation and, and child protection, we're still doing the face to face. We're just putting measures in place to keep staff and the community safe. Um, so we should be able to do, we've been very creative and innovative. We should, we should still be able to see people. Um, we've just been maybe doing it at a more social distance level. <laughs> um, so yes, we've implemented that in every single area at this point in time. So services will go on and they are going on and we actually implemented this a, a couple days ago. So it's great. even in some areas longer ago. So and people are feeling a lot of anxiety. It's just good for them to know that, mm -hmm. that we're here. They need to think creatively too, but you all will help, our staff will help them through that. Yes, and actually um, our community partners at the hospital and a lot of foster care, nursing facilities and families, they've been actually as creative and innovative as we have been. And so it's really, this community is just amazing in how we come together yeah. during these crises. So it's, um, it's, we've been getting help from everybody and we've been a, a big partner in it as well. So it's going actually okay right now, just just fine. Just it's a strange situation. Right. So well, and just to mirror what Joe had said, thank 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 you all. And honestly, I'm just very thankful we have such strong community partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, we we're able to 
um, nimbly move in a way that maybe some other places are not able to. So yeah, I would say we're that. unique in this way, but I, I might be biased. But we have about the best <laughs> public health director and uh, emergency <laughs> manager if possible, and that's not always the case in counties. We are very. Um, I'm filled with gratitude for all of yeah. you. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Sheriff, uh, could we? Have a couple words here. If you got a chance? I got a couple questions for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Say Fine. just the concerns about public safety. You know, this is a uncharted waters. We've never been in a situation like that. Yeah, you have. You had the Verso fire. Oh yeah. You know more about <laughs> this kind of stuff than we do. Oh yeah. God, how quick they forget <laughs> the event of the century, and you're spacing it up. God, Joe, you okay. don't inspire confidence, do you? Oh, oh okay. Well, I'm sorry, Lee, but yeah, that that was quite an event up in Sartell and, and for that whole community for the area as well. Uh, but this, you know, works much more globally across the entire county, across the entire state. Uh, just the feeling of security as far as anything people will see that's that's going to be any different. Um, you know, neighbors watching out for neighbors. Uh, special concerns that you can see. Business as usual for, the, for law enforcement. Yes, it's pretty much business as usual for us. Uh, you know, we're... Uh, we're getting the executive orders from the governor every day, and there's some some implications of crimes in those. Uh, for instance, with the establishments and, and whatnot, we're going to do a lot of education the first time around. Uh, if we have repeat offenders, we might have to take it to the next level. But uh, yeah, people shouldn't see a difference in the service that we're providing. We're still responding to calls, emergencies. Uh, we'll obviously. Um, as an example uh, to the public, you know, social distancing, we do try to contact uh, or give the public the option to contact a, a, a deputy by phone or vice versa on non-emergency, non-investigative type calls so we don't actually have to have face-to-face -face, uh, unless the person's requesting it. But uh, otherwise, everything's pretty much um, status quo. We attend the emergency operations meetings daily, so we're briefed every day on the changes and, uh, and uh, are here to help. If I could just maybe give some kudos too, I did get a call from an establishment who uh, was very appreciative of how the officers, when they came in, kind of briefed them on what they could do, especially because some of these offer food and, you know, they have to come in obviously and some of these to pick the food up and uh, the explanations they gave and the considerations they gave to their concerns. So they, they said it was much appreciated because good, good. there's a lot of concern you know, for a lot of these owners. On yeah, there's there's some small survive. businesses out uh, in the county that uh, this will definitely affect. And, uh, and yeah, we uh, carry the governor's order, I believe, copies of it so we can leave it with the businesses if they have not heard about it or are not aware of it, uh, you know, so they can actually read it. Anything else? Thank you. After the meeting, I'd like to talk to you about conceal and carry statistics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, well, uh, that concludes our official business. Uh, for a long time, ever since our meetings have been televised, I have made the comment to people that, you know, uh, with the meeting being televised, you could actually email comments and questions to board members as the meeting was going on. Nobody, but nobody has ever done that until about six minutes ago. <laughs> and, it's, and it's from <clears throat> Alice Lensmeyer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it regards my farming comment. Of course it will be canceled. The governor suggests there are no meetings with 100 people or more and all bars and restaurants are closed at least until March 27th. We know at that time what's going We will know at that time what's going on. Just saying. And then the second email is uh, weddings and funerals. There are none. Can't have them. No church either. So the system works, folks. Are, are you going, to let Lee? You are you know? going home after this? Huh? Are you going home after this? No, nah, she's at work. Oh. I'm saving until five. Oh. So uh, anyway. Yeah, well, the, and I think it's good that she's helping with our public service announcement. Although I believe it's under fifty now, right? I don't know. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I get asked, and this brought up a story I was going to uh, relay to you guys anyway. Because when I get home every night, she wants to know what's going on relative to the county response. And uh, I learned way back when, during the uh, Wetterling uh, abduction, that uh, uh, to shut up and rely on our staff people to take care of this stuff because you could drive yourself nuts trying to stay abreast on an hourly basis. And I've gotten pretty good at that. Yeah. Uh, and so she comes home. Oh, got another email from Alice. Yes, under 50. <laughs> I'm sure her tone is much, much uh, <laughs> more soothing than that. <laughs> And calm. So, Alice, if you're out there, we know that you're saying it in a very nice way. <laughs> oh, delightful. <laughs> but, okay, I lost her now. But, yeah, that, that was the last message. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it's up to you folks, and uh, either you're up to the job or you're not. And, we are uh, up to the job. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are. And, well, I'm... I'm uh, you haven't heard me complain, and I won't, even if there would be problems because uh, you're under pressure. You don't have time to make decisions. I went through the Citizens Police Academy that the four local uh, police departments put on every year. And, you know, you, you hear the police and their reactions questioned, you know, after the fact. Well, it, it really... They have some, uh, a system, a video system, where you're watching something play out in front of you, and it looks so very real, and you're supposed to react to it. Uh, there were two drills they put us through. In the first one, without going into setting it up, I uh, didn't react fast enough, and I got shot to death. And in the second one, I was even slower, and I got stabbed to death. So... Uh, uh, you don't have much time to make a decision. And uh, this is the same thing, a little bit more forgiving, but not a whole lot. Uh, thank you very much, folks. Uh, duty, well, we expect that, and we get it, and we're grateful. Can I, can I, can I stop now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've had enough. Um, just to let you know, farming baseball dinner is until in April, so it's after March 27th. Oh. Well, although, although they have said no big things for eight weeks. Who, kn who knows? Maybe so, you'll sell more maybe tickets. Maybe we'll get now. lucky. Okay. But, but I think, unfortunately, probably not. Don't you guys have anything to do this afternoon? God, I want to go. <laughs> All righty. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn.